What's up guys, my name is Draytax and welcome to the third episode of the series. So in our last video we have learned how to use image load callback and we have also learned how to um, retrieve a base address of a certain DLL that was loaded into a specific process and it was Black Mesa's client DLL file and we have also learned how to use ILCTL. So today we're gonna step things up a bit and learn how to read and write memory from kernel side. Uh, this will be, uh, we'll be using mmcopy virtual memory, which is uh, an undocumented function, but they also refer it as, a, as an undocumented struct. So let's create a new source file. Let's call it memory. Uh, make sure it's uh, having a C extension and copy paste the uh, this struct or just write it down for now. We'll include and tips and mm copy virtual memory is basically what it says it's copies from a source source address into a target address that you have specified so from a different process to another process and we'll also have to specify our uh, buffers size and k processor mode is an undocumented enum so i don't know uh, a lot about it but it has three different values. It has kernel mode, user mode, and maximum mode. And I've seen this uh, used at, for example, OB close handle, where you have to specify the uh, previous mode. So if you have opened the handle, for example, uh, from kernel, then if you call uh, OB close handle, you have to tell that the uh, processor mode of the thread that was uh, previously opening the handle was originally opened by kernel uh, or user mode side. That depends on what you have done. We're gonna not jump too far, but you can do your own research. So we'll have to declare two different functions. We'll have uh, them returning anti status and we'll call them uh, kernel read virtual memory. And this one will take a P process, process, a p void source address and of course a p void target address and a size t size will uh, declare a p size t this will be our return size but we'll just call it bytes and here we will have uh, We'll call, uh, let's let's type empty stat, or we, we could just do return. Uh, this this is the moment where we'll call mm copy virtual memory. So we'll do mm copy virtual memory. We'll specify our process, our source address, our uh, target process here is going to be kernel itself, the kernel driver itself. So ps get current process and the target address, of course, size. We'll have to specify kernel mode here and the address of bytes. And we can safely return this. We'll copy paste this function and we'll swap the uh, values here a bit. We'll uh, do something similar, but we'll use this function to write virtual memory. And here the first uh, parameter, the source process will be actually coming from the kernel driver itself. So use p, p as get current process again. The source address can stay and we'll swap uh, the third parameter to be the process itself. And the target address can stay, size, kernel mode, bytes is all the same. And this is with uh, 1c. All right, and here we want to create a new struct, well, two of them that are going to store our data. And we'll also declare two new ICTL codes. So let's go to communication center. We're going to copy paste our first ICTL code, declare it twice as more. Uh, the code is changing to 667 and 668 and we're going to call this IO read request 
All right, and what we basically are doing here is uh, just declaring ISCTR codes. We'll uh, tell the driver when to read uh, the memory and where exactly and when to write the memory. So this is what we'll use to identify the request as usual. And we want to declare two new more new structures and uh, we're going to do type def struct kernel read request. Let's tidy this a bit up. And to continue it, we're going to do kernel read request pointer p kernel read request. All right. And our struct, I don't like this. Okay. So our struct is going to take a ulong process ID first. So this will allow us basically to uh, specify any process that we want to read and write into or read from and write into. And we'll also specify an address. We'll specify our P buffer. And we'll also have to specify, specify the size. And we want to copy paste this. And make something similar for write. So I'm just going to replace read with write. So we have done our first major steps into uh, allowing ourselves to read and write memory using kernel. We're going to jump back into communication C and go to I control. And here we'll have to declare our uh, checks depending on what I control code are we receiving. So we're going to do control code IO read request and we're going to also check for control code equals io write request all right so do you remember what i've said in my last video uh, i've basically said that you can cast a system buffer into anything you want and we have created these structures for a reason so we can do p kernel read request this is going to be called read input we're going to be casting this system buffer into our struct we're going to be sending something similar from the user mode application towards our driver our read input is having a bunch of data that we have already declared before so we our user mode application is going to send us the process id the address it wants to read or write into uh, and also the size and its own buffer, the variable that we are going to copy the memory into or write into whatever. And we want to make sure that the process ID that the user mode application is sending is still alive. So we want to find the process ID first. Uh, sorry, the process by process ID first. And we'll have to declare a PE process process for that. So pass the reference of the process and uh, instead of doing this, we're going to do if empty success. This function basically checks if the function that we have called, you know, it has to return empty status. So if the function that we have called is, uh, uh, well, the function that we have called returned empty uh, status success, as you can see up here. So if it returned that code, uh, our if statement is going to be true. And here we can call kernel read virtual memory. We'll have to include our memory header. We're going to pass on the process. If we have found the process, we, we obviously have a value in this variable. And here we will basically read, uh, from the, read from the read input address and write it in our p buffer. Now, p buffer is going to be declared on our user mode application. So we're going to basically read from an address and then copy that uh, data into our buffer. Um, because the p buffer that we're going to pass from our user mode application is going to be exactly the address. It's going to be the address of, the, of our buffer variable. So we're going to do read input p 
buff and we'll also use its size. And now if we have obviously uh, successfully um, done this, we're going to do status, status, success. And byte IO is going to equal with the size of um, kernel read request. And now we're going to do something similar with the writing. We're going to copy paste this because I'm lazy. Uh, the struct is going to be rewritten to pwrite. Just for transparency, this is going to be write input. And now this is different a bit, All, but only a uh, little bit. We will swap out the uh, function as well. This will be kernel write virtual memory. And now th the only difference that we do here is that we have a value declared in our user mode application in our buffer itself. So we're going to write that data into the specific address of our process. So this should be uh, pretty clean. So what we have done here is we read data from a certain address and we copy that data into our uh, user mode applications buffer. And then we, if we want to write, we already have something written in our buffer, our variable in a user mode application, and we want to write that data into a certain process. So we use that pbuffers uh, data and write it into the specific address. And that's all. And let's try to uh, build our driver. Let's see if we have any issues that we have to fix. And of course, we have a number that we have to uh, treat. All right, so uh, this should not be an issue to uh, solve. We're just going to do the usual uh, type of way. We're going to go to our memory source file. So we're going to do pragma warning disable. 4047 and 4024 and fix, fix D to be A. And we also have a warning in communication C. This should not be an issue at all. Pragma warning disable 4022. Let's try to build that driver. Uh, it seems like I've missed some. Oh yeah, because uh, I've declared it into our header file instead of the source file. Uh, excuse me for that. Let me uh, fix that up. It should be good to go now, but it isn't. So yeah, this uh, sort of error usually happens when you include multiple files uh, from the top to the bottom. Uh, when you have multiple flies, files like I do here uh, because of transparency. Uh, this is uh, mostly because of we have declared the read virtual memory and write virtual memory in our header file. Uh, this should be not an issue. We All we have to do here is uh, just simply define the function, but do not exactly declare what they are, what behavior they are just going to do. So we can jump back to our memory C copy paste the functions let's try to build now and we are almost good to go our driver has successfully built one thing that we're just going to fix up here is that we're going to go to the declaration of this address and this is going to be well called csgo client deal address go back here Let's change the uh, debug message to, let's go to my total commander, go to bin, let's copy the path again. Uh, we can retain the uh, client DLL, let's fix up the path. And this should be good to go. Yeah. All right, uh, let's try to build it one more last time. Okay, yeah, I forgot to change the uh, name at the I control. So this is going to be CSGO client deal address as the, at the same time. I mean, just as the same. 
Okay, and our driver has successfully built and it is ready to be used. Now all we have to do is declare the uh, user mode behavior and we are ready to go. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, guidedhacking.com slash donate, patreon.com slash guidedhacking. Please support us so that we can continue to make videos and peace out.